Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. And uh, just several things going on first. Let's see. This team got to rest this week. They didn't do it. All right. Yeah. This team and this team played each other. So it went kind of like. And finally, these guys won yesterday. I know. But it was a good game. It was really a good game. So nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely. All right. So. Now, uh, also today is National Sunday School Teacher Appreciation Day. So I, was, I was telling Beth, she told me about this, that we're going to have all the Sunday School teachers stand up and do a happy dance. But she said no. So, uh, so anyway, we just want to say thank you to our teachers who are teaching in our Sunday school and doing those very things, uh, teaching the Word of God. We also have these white slips in the bulletins. We're going to have a singing Sunday on November 5, so put your uh, your suggestions, who you want to sing, and uh, songs. Poinsettia forms uh, at each door came out with your newsletter. We need those back by November the 12th so we can decorate for uh, for Christmas this year, which we will be decorating on November 24th, I think. November 24th, which will be the Friday. And, uh, let's see. Oh, all right. Got that, got that. Okay. You see these bags right here? All right. There's a trunk with these bags at the front door. These are treat bags. Our youth made these up, and you can get these out in different places. Basically, where you go, haircut, <coughs> drugstore. Uh, hardware, grocery, doctor's office, wherever. And it has candy and some tracks in it. And so they're called treat bags. Instead of trick or treat, they're treat bags. So you just hand them out and tell the people, here you go, you know, this is a treat bag from our youth, and just enjoy them. And uh, so far, I have not had one person hand it back to me and say, I have no thanks, I don't want it. So there you go. There's a whole trunk out there, and it's got them in there. So take as many as you think you can use. And they're out there for you to use, okay? And let's see. What else? Okay, I don't miss anything. Okay, okay, the backpacks. Uh, they're concentrating now. They have a, For the backpacks, they have a lot of things for the older kids. Uh, younger kids is what they need things for. And so they're taking them up, taking those things up the rest of this month, October. And so the cutoff is November 1. And so then they'll, uh, they're already assembling backpacks. But uh, for the smaller kids, probably preschool through about the fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, they need some things for that. And also for Matthew, uh, you can continue to send cards. He's, you know, he's in the hospital on wait, uh, waiting for this heart transplant. And so you can send cards to uh, his, basically his address, which is in the bulletin, and also Gail Hacker's grandmother's address. Both of those addresses are in the bulletin. And uh, they had a, a post on Facebook this week. They said that uh, the mail room must have been hoarding his packages. People were sending him packages from Amazon, and they delivered like 10 packages at one time. It's kind of, they said it was kind of like Christmas. And uh, so they weren't bringing them one at a time. They just determined to wait until then. So, and as you know, next week, Tommy Richardson, the uh, Scrabbin Association Director of Missions, will be here. And, uh, and then the following week, Marshall Locke will be here. And he'll also be he'll be speaking, but also leading the Lord's Supper on the 29th of October. So make sure you're here for that for those events. And so I think that's it. So mission offering, Jamie Chapman. And so thank you for your giving. Today's the last day. If you want to give? Today's the last day to give to that. Another uh, church that's being helped out by the Jamie Chapman offering is the City of Refuge Church in Columbia. They're in the Euclid community of Columbia. And basically, they've been able to start some good news clubs, work in the elementary school, and to be able to make inroads into that community. And because of Jamie Chapman, they're helping to finance some of these things so that they can reach the people in this community. And so that's the City of Refuge Church in Columbia, and J. Will Wilson is the pastor of that church. And so we, uh, so far, have given $1,057. Our goal was $800, so you've been more than generous. Thank you. Today's the last day, and, and what we're giving is going to be matched dollar for dollar. So 
So we're going to give a little over $2,000 to the Jamie Chapman offering, but today's the last day. So if you'd like to contribute to that, make sure you do that today. All right, now if you stand, please. We're going to sing, oh, worship the king. We're going to sing the fifth verse. Now, if you look in your hymn book, there's no fifth verse. But there is five verses in the original. So you're going to see those words up on the screen of a worship the king. We're only going to sing the fifth verse of a worship the king.
people would stop hating each other. But as it goes, that this would be a wake-up call for both sides, that ultimately they need you, and they need you to be Savior and to be Lord. And I ask that you would continue to work in their lives so that we can see that happen, that they would come to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Still stand. We're going to sing A Child of the King. You'll find that in your in your hymn book. And also the words on the screen. And uh, Hattie, Katie, Eugenia Peck Newell wrote this song. She maintained a summer of residence in Thousand Island Park, New York. And uh, they had two sons. And she wrote poems for the Northern Christian Advocate in Syracuse, New York. And this is one of those poems that she had. My father is rich. Since we're talking about rich man and poor man today. This song, My Father is Rich in Houses and Lands. Sing all three verses.
Y'all ever done that? Pumpkins mm -hmm. get dirty, don't they? Watermelons, pumpkins, they get dirty. And so, then, he cuts the top off. Now, this is probably what you look like when you come. When God gets, gets you. You know, oh, cool. See? <laughs> See? So, but basically, what does God do? He removes the seeds. Oh, excuse me. He cuts the top off. Some of y'all got it. Hmm. He cuts the top <laughs> off. See, I got cut on top, too. Then he cuts the top off, scoops, scoops out all the yucky stuff inside, which you can make pumpkin pies from, by the way. And he removes the seeds of doubt and hate and greed. And then he carves you a new smiling face. <coughs> right? He puts his light inside of you to shine for all the world to see. And this message says was passed on to me from another pumpkin that was picked from the past. And so you share that with other people. That this, you know, if, if people don't know Jesus Christ, it, it's tough. Life is hard. But then when Jesus comes in and he takes all that yucky stuff out and he gives you light and you can share that light with other people. All right, y'all got that? You ready to go home? I said that's enough. All right, so there you go. So, by the way, these are not real pumpkins. Okay, you know, they're... They're the kind you can cut and decorate, and they'll stay like this for a long time. So. All right, so now our choir is going to come and share with us a song.
And this is dedicated to missing church attendees. To make it possible for everyone to attend church this Sunday, we are going to have a special No Excuse Sunday. Cots will be placed in the foyer for those who say, Sunday is my only day to sleep in. There will be a special section with lounge chairs for those who feel that our pews are too hard. Eye drops will be available for those with tired eyes from watching TV late Saturday night. We will have steel helmets for those who say, the roof would cave in if I ever came to church. Blankets will be furnished for those who think the church is too cold, and fans for those who say it is too hot. Scorecards will be available for those who wish to list the hypocrites present. Relatives and friends will be in attendance for those who can't go to church and cook dinner at the same time. We will distribute stamp out stewardship buttons for those who feel the church is always asking for money. One section will be devoted to trees and grass for those who like to seek God in nature. Doctors and nurses will be in attendance for those who plan to be sick on Sunday. The sanctuary will be decorated with both Christmas poinsettias and Easter lilies for those who never have seen the church without them. We will provide hearing aids for those who can't hear the preacher and cotton wool for those who think he's too loud. Hope to see you there. And then somebody wrote, of all the excuses used to not go to church, there is none that will work when Jesus comes back for us. Just think where that excuse will get you there. So we're looking about last time about excuses. So, an amazing fact, Craig, Craig Coley, a California man who was wrongly convicted for killing an ex-girlfriend and her son four decades ago is found innocent. He's set free and receives a $21 million settlement from the city of Simi, Simi Valley. After being locked up for 39 years, the unjustly treated prisoner becomes a happy millionaire. Then there's Bill Cosby, who once was known and loved by everyone as America's favorite dad, now the disgraced millionaire comedian is languishing in a prison where he will likely spend the remainder of his life after being convicted of sexual assault. What a contrast. And so, in the Wall Street Journal, there was an anonymous quote. It says, Money is an article which may be used as a universal passport to everywhere except heaven and as a universal provider for everything except happiness. We're talking about money today with the rich man. Now, money can provoke covetousness and competition. It's a wonderful servant, but it can be a terrible master. And basically, the Pharisees, now Jesus you know, was talking, uh, the Pharisees probably, as Jesus was teaching, they were lurking on the outskirts of the crowds. You know, they, they wanted to hear what this guy was teaching. And so when he would teach and tell these stories, they would usually sneer at it. Sneering means they would turn their nose up at it, you know, make, make offside comments and things like Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. But the thing is, the Pharisees, they loved money and they cultivated godless values. And they professed to love God, but they measured success by wealth and possessions. They honored God with their words, but they did not honor Him in their heart. They were far from Him. And so this speculation, the story that we're looking at, this parable, some people say this may be a real thing because Jesus gave the poor man, Lazarus, a name. He normally didn't do that. But he gave this man a name, Lazarus. But he didn't give the rich man a name. So some people say, hmm, might, might be a real thing. But really, I think this is a parable with divine truths. <clears throat> and it's being taught in this to us. And so basically, we're looking at it. And now, now Lazarus, is a Greek word for the name Eleazar. Eleazar was a very common name. And so, and that was the name of Abraham's servant, Eleazar. And so, Lazarus is just that Greek name that we got from the translation. So, there is a rich man. We're going to look at their life contrast. There is a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen. Now, this guy wore the name brand stuff. He wore Levi's, right? Calvin Klein got the most expensive suits. Man, he, he imported them in. He had it all. And he ate great. I mean, he had food from all over the place. His, his tough day was, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat for breakfast? What am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to eat for supper? Because 
He's got it, got it all. Got it all. And so, but the poor man, here's the contrast, Lazarus, he was covered with sores, lying at his the rich man's gate. He longed to be filled with what fell from the rich man's table, but instead the dogs would come and lick his sores. Now, Lazarus, here's the contrast. The rich guy, Lazarus was poor, maybe homeless, obviously sick. He had exposed sores. And so he would be looked at as unclean by the Pharisees. Nobody wanted to touch this guy. And he was laying at the rich man's gate. Now, some people said probably people picked him up and brought him to the gate and probably literally just threw him down at the gate and just left him there. And so here he was at the gate. He was hoping that there would be crumbs off the table. You know, whatever they were going to throw away, he would get to eat. That's what he was hoping for. But, you know, his name is interesting. Lazarus, Eleazar, means God is my help. And you think, how is God helping him? Lazarus, I don't think, lost track of that. Even though he was in a tough situation, he knew God was helping him, even though it was hard. And so, in spite of the circumstances, he was there. And I wonder, the rich man, I wonder why he let this guy be at his gate. You know, you think about that. I mean, he's right there at his gate. People are going to come to the rich man's house, you know, his friends, his relatives. They're going to say, what in the world is this guy? What's, what's he at the, what you, what you doing at your gate? You know, what, what's the deal? And, you know, as, and probably the rich guy making an excuse. I know he's a nuisance. I know this and that. I know. But I guess it shows that I'm really a good guy because I'm letting him stay at my gate. And, you know, and we might give him a few scraps off the table every so often. But, you know, really, I, I wish he wouldn't be here, but he's here. So, so I guess that makes me look good in a way. And so, but the thing is, he really did have a lot of crumbs, but it says the dogs would come and lick the sores. Y'all ever had a dog lick you? Lick your face, you know, you know, just, they're so happy to see you, they just lick your face and lick all of you, and, you know, your rear end's going about 100 miles an hour, you know, the dog is doing all this. Well, these dogs came over licking the sores, and that was one way he was actually getting treatment. Now, basically, you're supposed to help the poor, but this guy didn't think about helping the poor a whole lot. In, in Tanzania, you know, on Fridays, Fridays are the day for the Muslims. That's like our Sunday. Friday is basically like our Sunday for them. That's the main day for worship. And the people, the shop owners, had the shops open, and the beggars would go around because they knew this on Friday. You know, they could get this. That these shop owners would have bowls of coins. And when these beggars would come in, they'd just reach in to that bowl and give them a coin, and the people would leave. And so they were kind of fulfilling the law in a small way that they were giving to the poor. And then we had street beggars in Arusha and Moshi. And uh, in Arusha, I would go, and I got to know this guy that sold stuff. He carried a tray. Remember the ladies who used to carry the trays? You know, in the 40s, you know, they had uh, different things in the trays. They'd walk around and had a strap around their neck and sell things. Well, this guy had a tray like that. And he had peanuts. And so I would buy peanuts and he, and he would take paper and roll up the paper, make a cone, and put peanuts in it and fold it over. It looked like a little ice cream cone. And he would sell these. So I'd buy about 10 of them. And as I walked down the street, people would say, hey, can you help me out? I'm hungry. I could give them peanuts. Sometimes I give them some money, but I give them peanuts too. And I, I know you think that's overseas. Well, Pam and I were in Wal at Walmart parking lot. And this lady came up. She said, y'all got any money? I'm trying to feed my kids. And how many people carry cash anymore? You know, not, not a whole lot of people carry cash. I mean, we didn't have cash at that time. But as we were walking in, Pam, oh, what did you say? Holy Spirit just kind of, hey. And uh, she had a bag of peanuts. We're on a peanut thing right now. Uh, I had a bag of peanuts in her purse, and so she gave the lady the peanuts. But she said she was hungry, so there you go. And so the thing was, the rich man probably ignored Lazarus. You know, okay, he can stay at my gate, but he, he became kind of an invisible person. We just kind of ignored him. And maybe, maybe Lazarus' friend, I mean, the rich man's friends, when they came, maybe they would give him something, you know, as they walked into the house. Man, let's help you out. But anyway, you imagine the excuses the rich man can give. You know, I, I don't have time. You know, I don't want to touch this guy. I don't want to be unclean. I don't want to be bothered with it. If I help him, then 45 other people are going to line up here and want help. Uh, that, that happens. Uh, we've seen that happen. And so, here he was making all of these excuses not to do the right thing. So then, we look at their death contracts. So it says, one day, the poor man died. 
Lazarus died. And what happened to him? It says he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side, or Abraham's bosom. It says the rich man also died and he was buried. Well, that's pretty final. Buried. Mm -hmm. That's it. Done. But Lazarus was carried by the angels to Abraham's side or bosom. Now, someone said that death is the great leveler, the common denominator. Everyone has to face it. Now, Lazarus, he died, but he probably didn't have a typical funeral. You know, most of the time you have mourners and you have <clears throat> spices, a tomb, and people to take care of your body. He probably didn't have that. He was probably put into a potter's field. Some people said his body was probably taken when he died and probably dumped in the trash dump, Gehenna, where they burned trash. Probably just dumped his body there and said, good. And probably some of the people said, man, let's get rid of that guy. Man, he was just, you know, walk by him every day. Oh, man, he stung his sword. Man, I'm glad he's gone. But think about the rich man. What kind of funeral do you think he had? Lavish. What? Lavish. Yeah, man, everybody came. You know, and, and, and you know, they said, oh, yeah, he was my very good friend. You know, probably never saw him but once every two years. You know, he was my good friend. You know, had, had everything, the fancy, the funeral, everything that you would expect a person like this to have, like a state funeral. And they had fancy everything, and then they had the family fighting about all the stuff afterwards, right? And they were just getting that, that that's not the scripture, okay? But if you study the Greek, I bet you it's in there. But anyway, so Lazarus escorted to Abraham's side. And basically, this, as the Pharisees were listening to this, this was an insult to them. Because Lazarus was an unclean person, a sinner. How, how dare he be taken to the side of Abraham at this great feast? No, 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 no. That's only reserved for special people. He's not a special person. But the great place, he was escorted there by angels. Any of y'all watch Touched by an Angel? Okay. Okay, yeah, I know, yeah. We, we watched that. They have one episode about a little guy. He's got a, a terminal illness. He's got a, he's got a bucket list. He's got a, a list written in a notebook. And he says, I got this, this, I want to do this, 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 and this. And so if you know anything about Touched by an Angel, the angels are coming there and they're helping him. And he gets to the, the, the last point, and, and the last thing's crossed up. And Andrew, the death angel's right there, and the guy, the little guy, Petey, he's looking at him. And he says, hey, I, I, I finished everything, you know. It, it, I crossed off the last thing. He said, and then he said, okay. And he knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die. And then he looked at Andrew, who was the death angel, and he looked at him and he said, hey, you're coming too. And Andrew said, yes. I'm coming. It is finished. And so he escorted. In the show, he escorted the 